I've always said, if you're happy with where you are today, then that is the combination of all of your successes and failures, your good times, your bad times, your heartaches and your joys, all mixed into one to bring you to today's spot. And with, without any one of those things, you may not be where you are currently. Hi, welcome to the Realtors Conspiracy Podcast. I'm here today with Chris Yacht from Chase Realty. How are you, Chris? I'm doing fantastic. Thanks for having me here. Awesome. So tell us, how long have you been a realtor and what's your background in real estate? Sure. Um, I've been a real estate agent now for 12 years. I uh, started with... Uh, Century 21 uh, when I first came out of the uh, off the courses and then I, I immediately switched over to Chase Realty um, within six weeks or six months of uh, first starting my, uh, my my license here. Nice so well tell us about Chase quickly like what attracted you to them and why the switch? Yeah, yeah so the reason I decided to go Chase Realty is because I'm a, I'm a fairly independent guy I really like to um, kind of take things um, by my own reins um, and Chase Realty allows me a lot of the flexibility to do that. Um, while charging me very little um, uh, as far as end fees, or they're actually zero end fees. We, we're 100% commission brokerage. Um, so whenever I make a sale, I keep everything that I, I, I make. Um, mm -hmm. And our administration fees are ridiculously low, so it really helps out well. Um, and anybody who's an entrepreneurial mindset um, should really be taking a look at their bottom line and deciding whether their brokerage is actually providing them with the, the amount of services that they're actually paying for. So that's why I decided to chase. Nice. Very cool. What is it that Chase would offer you as an agent or offer new agents um, that is standing out to you? Well, Chase offers me, like I said, a lot of independence. Um, number one is I get to, I get to kind of control the way I do my business. We don't have to do any kind of, um, any kind of desk time or office time. Um, so there's no, there's nobody telling me what I should and shouldn't do with my time. So I can run my business the way I want to run it. I know that Chase Realty right now has a pretty attractive package for new agents if they decided to come over. Um, that, that package includes the, uh, the first two months for free, uh, two months administration cost for free. Um, they're also doing um, a nice promotional package. So when you're coming over to Chase Realty, I think they're doing uh, some for sale signs as well as um, open house signs, business cards, um, all that kind of stuff that, it, it, that really kind of stops people from making uh, big moves. Um, Chase Realty is kind of taking that over. Um, all that and providing us with a lot of resources on the, on the back end as well. So our broker of record, Bruce Moran is, uh, is a fantastic guy. Um, he's been in the business for a while and I haven't been able to stump him with any of my questions yet. Nice. I've asked him a lot. Cool. Cool. Very cool. Yeah. I hear he's very knowledgeable experience. He has the patience to answer people. So those are great quality. I think. I think they are. He's, he's pretty empathetic too. So he, it's, it's more than, it's more than just a business. Um, at least the way I feel with it is more than just a business. It's, it's a passion to, to help entrepreneurs actually gain traction in a market that can sometimes feel saturated. Um, you know, there are a lot of realtors and sometimes it's hard to find your footing and figure out, you know, what you're supposed to doing, be doing, especially when the brokerage takes so much of your, your income. Um, yeah. So Bruce really has set up Chase Realty to provide the, the agents, the, the best path forward, I think. Nice. Very cool. So let's talk about you and your career. Yeah. Uh, tell us a little bit, like what made you successful? Like what type of uh, thing you gen that generated most success for you? Uh, so success is interesting. It's a, it's a, it's a tough concept for me um, because everybody has a different measuring stick as to what success actually means. Um, and, and, and putting, you know, a fine point on what is success. Um, I feel like I do fairly well for myself. I'm, uh, you know, we, uh, I, I do you know, between 20 and, and 30 deals a year, which I feel is, is pretty comfortable for me and the way I like to live my lifestyle. Yeah. Um, I think the biggest thing for me is having, having resources available so that I can follow up well with my clients. Mm -hmm. um, most of my clientele now comes from referral. I do very little actual active marketing, um, trying to promote myself or anything like that. And I tell my, I tell my clients that if I'm doing any marketing at all, you won't see my face on billboards or on park signs or anything like that myself. Um, I spend my money and my advertising money advertising my clients' listings, which I think is a, a good way for me to be selling myself is, mm -hmm. is to be, you know, focusing on the client's needs rather than my own needs. Um, and I think that that really um, speaks volumes. The way I tend to do business, though, is I, I tend to do a little bit of overkill. 
Um, so there's many a times where before open houses um, and, and, the, and the grass needs to be cut, I'll be in my suit or in my, in my Sunday best and I'll be cutting the grass just to make sure that the house looks its best. I've helped people finish up their painting. I've helped them move. You know, it, there's, there's no limit to what I've done. Um, I had a, one of my better clients when it was a, an older lady. Um, she, uh, I, I met her when I was door knocking one day and uh, she didn't, uh, she didn't just let anybody talk to her or let her in, in the house, but she let me in the house. Um, and then every, every time it snowed, I would, put, I would just stop by her house and I'd shovel her driveway for her. Um, this was what, before she even thought about selling her house. It was just a, a courtesy thing that I would do. And she, she really responded well to stuff like that. So I think really my number one best advice um, for how I gained success, or at least my level of success, is that I really put the needs of my clients ahead of my own needs. Mm -hmm. and, and didn't really look at the bottom line as to how I was going to get rewarded. Um, you do things out of the, uh, just out of the kindness of your heart. And as far as karma is concerned, it comes back to you. Nice. Yeah, I like that. So I'm hearing like a lot of integrity, a lot of keeping in touch with your clients, with give you referrals uh, yeah. and support, like shoveling people's driveway and being yeah. there. And then in door knocking, oh, sorry, yeah. you answer something? No, go ahead. Okay, and in door knocking, like uh, how often do you do that? How often do you try to generate new business? Well, I mean, with with our current situation that we're in, um, door knocking is kind of not on my radar at the moment, but it yeah. certainly it certainly plays a very large part in my marketing efforts. Mm -hmm. um, and again, maybe the way you door knock is is kind of the the reason why some people get turned off at door knocking. Yeah. Um, I don't door knock to find leads or to find listings or to find buyers. I door knock to provide information myself. Um, so you, so when I'm out looking for, um, when I'm out door knocking, I'm looking for people who are looking for information. Um, and it's mostly trying to provide a service rather than trying to, trying to win something for myself. Um, again, it's always person first, me second. Um, as, a, as a leader, I guess your, your job is to, to, to hoist people up. On your shoulders rather than push them down um, so I think the same way um, with my clients mm -hmm. my background is in health services I used to do recreation and leisure services in long-term care homes um, so when I was there it was always about bringing people to their fullest and best potential of life mm -hmm. and I guess that kind of got ingrained in me over the years and, and I still try to provide that even now in real estate try to provide the best kind of kind of life people can can live and I know that can sound a little cliche or altruistic, but in the, in the end of the day, it makes some, in my mind, good business sense as well. Um, because clients who, um, who you've, you've provi provided that kind of service to are really, really loyal um, to the point where they'll, they'll advertise you and, and preach your name to, to anybody and everybody that uh, has any word of whisper of real estate on their mind. I do uh, appreciate that you said you're from the caring industry because I find um, agents who have a background of something in that type of industry always have that approach. So I find that's a really good quality that even if you're not from that industry to just say, I'm going to be caring for the other first. Yeah. And that's how I'm going to be successful. I think that's, that's a great quality to bring. Well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I, and, and I think hum humility is probably takes a, a good, a good chunk of it. Um, mm -hmm. It's sometimes remembering that you're not you're not super special because you're a real estate agent. Um, you're super special because you're you. Yeah. Um, so it's it's just being yourself is really the important part. And what speaks to your your own personal soul, um, because that's that's the important part. Because you can you can copy anybody, but if you're not true to you, it'll come it'll come across as forced. As far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very good. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. So they say, uh, what doesn't kill us makes us stronger. So what would you say made you stronger in business? Ah, in business. Oh my goodness. Learning to <laughs> fail forward. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> learning, learning to uh, embrace failures, learning to actually um, encourage making mistakes. Um, I'm, I'm pretty hard on myself. Um, so when I do something wrong, it really sticks to my, it sticks to my soul. So I really want to make sure that every time I do something wrong, I'm learning a really valuable lesson, whether it's a big failure or small failure. Um, failure is a positive word in my world anymore. Um, it means that I've tried. It means that I've, I've pushed myself beyond my current situation um, and it's pushed me outside my comfort zone. Um, so what makes me stronger is actually embracing the fact that I'm human and embracing the fact that I don't know everything 
um, and, and pushing myself beyond my comfort um, and, and being okay with whatever outcome comes out. Because in the end of the day, good, bad, and different, uh, every outcome is, is still a learning opportunity. Um, in my life, um, I've, I've always said, um, if, if you're happy with where you are today, then that is the combination of all of your successes and failures, your good times, your bad times, your heartaches and your joys, all mixed into one to bring you to today's spot. And with, without any one of those things, you may not be where you are currently. So you gotta, you, I, I cherish every pain that I've, I've been able to um, endure. I've, I've cherished every joy that I've been able to experience. Very good. Yeah, that's super awesome advice. Awesome way to live, right? I think so. It makes me happier as a person. Yeah, I can see that. That's cool. <laughs> uh, what would be the best advice you've ever received? Ah, the best advice I ever received. Uh, read. Okay, cool. Yeah. The, um, if you're not learning, you're losing, um, mm -hmm. is, is the number one best advice I've ever, I've ever received. Um, it has provided me with more benefits than I could ever um, I can never uh, even describe. Um, so if, you, if, you, if you're not reading or if you're not learning, then you're falling behind people like myself who are reading and learning every day. Well, we, I watch podcasts. I, watch, I, I listen to blogs. I, I read blogs. Sorry. I, I, I watch blogs. I read books. I have an Audible account. You know, it's always something knowledge-based in my life. Whenever I'm driving, um, I always have an audio book playing in the background. I never listen to any music myself. Uh, and, and I never read the news. Nice. Um, because I'd rather be happy than sad. Yeah, I, I appreciate that. I'm one of those. So that's awesome. I'm really proponent for that. So tell us what would be like a good book you're reading right now or Audible or what do you have on the go? Well, my go-to book, if, if I'm ever looking for a book to read, I, I'll, I'll read it over and over, um, is The Richest Man in Babylon. Um, okay. It's a great parable book for people who have to remember how to learn to 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 invest their money, save their money, uh, work like an entrepreneur, pay yourself first. Um, so that book for me is, is always my number, my number one go-to book whenever I'm looking for something to read. Mm -hmm. um, there's, there's lots of great ones um, on negotiation. It's uh, I'm probably never split the difference. Um, that's a really great book for negotiation. Um, yeah, the, the, my library, I probably have a thousand books in my library. Um, oh, and, and more and more I'm adding uh, educational courses from great courses uh, online um, fantastic and then having a subscription to uh, like Skillshare and stuff like that to learn new things um, yeah I think those would be my first two books that I pick up um, uh, be our guest is a really great book as well it's uh, based on uh, the Disney principle of customer service first which is always great um, the uh, deliver the unexpected is a great one um, you know, there's the sales Bibles by Jeffrey Gittimer. Those are always good. Um, nice little, you know, touches and tidbits about sales um, and, and remembering that sales is a journey. Um, so those are probably some books that I might recommend just off the top of my head. Uh, I'd have other ones if you, if I had some time to think. Yeah, about it. that's awesome. I love it. A couple I knew, a couple I didn't know. So I'll check those out for sure. <laughs> Cool. What, would, uh, what advice would you give to a realtor who feels like calling it quits? Don't. Um, call, calling it quits is the, is the point where you're ready to make a bold jump, a bold statement. Nice. Um, you know, there's, there's never been a company that hasn't, done, uh, hasn't gone through great adversity at some point in their career or not. There's always, there's always that point where you're, you're deciding, you know, take the leap or don't take the leap. Um, and, and, you know, it, the path never traveled is one regretted um you know it, it ultimately ultimately to me means you you need to be bolder in your steps um and if you if you can't figure out what steps to take you know you're i'm, I'm happy to talk to you about the next steps you can do if you're a realtor looking to do that um, but ultimately it's, it's push yourself beyond your current um and it's it's remembering that what you know now um is not what you're going to know later sure. so just keep pushing you're a different person later than you are today, every day, every month, every year. I get angry at past Chris all the time, um, yes. and I do everything I can for future Chris. Wow, that's awesome. Cool, thank you. And then tell us what are you looking forward in the future? What's coming up for you? Like, we're starting now, getting out of COVID, and nobody wants to talk about it no more, but what are you looking forward to? <laughs> yeah, so COVID's, I mean, COVID's been an interesting dynamic. It's, you know, again, 
there's there's never a situation in our world where there's not something that that's eating at somebody. You know, COVID is is affecting us all in the same way. Um, those who you know, some of us are lucky that we have past clients that are working that that we're working with now. Some of us have been able to pick up some new clients. Um, you know, I'm, I'm excited to see where how this restructures some of our um, our policies um, mm -hmm. or the way we practice real estate. Um, I can say that things like Zoom here have actually increased my ability to do real estate. I do yeah. far less showings and have and are able to, I'm able to close more deals in less time, mostly because I'm doing virtual showings, which has been pretty fantastic. I'm pretty excited about that carrying on in my business. Mm -hmm. um, so that's number one. The other thing is, you know, being able to the high tech and high touch with video conferencing like we're doing right now um, is, is a great merger of where our, our world is going. Um, and I don't think we're going to slow down. I think this is going to be um, it's going to be the tipping point that might push real estate into the next generation of what it is. Sure. Um, real estate agents overall um, might need to start thinking of themselves as, uh, as something other than just a, an inventory access point. Um, you know, waiting for people to call you and ask you to see houses and then you get the keys and let them in. Um, that's not what the real estate industry or a real estate agent is about anymore. Um, it's really about being an advocate for the clients. It's really about representing your clients in the best way. And I think that this might be a, a way to push us beyond just the inventory access point and start to have different conversations with our clients and say, okay, what's really going to be important to you in the future rather than what's important to my pocketbook in the next, you know, three to six months. Yeah. Yeah, that's very cool. I see how you took that on and you're putting it in your business for later. You're not going to stop. It no. saved you time. It saved you money doing the virtual showings and doing all those Zooms. So that's right. That's, that's cool. right. I, like, looking, at, looking at every opportunity in your business to be an entrepreneur, entrepreneurs need to be number one, looking at their bottom line, making sure that they're not spending money after good money after bad. Um, mm -hmm. There's a lot of advertising that you can be doing that, that doesn't, doesn't actually have a trackable rate of return. Um, and if you don't know what your rate of return on your advertising is, then you got to be asking yourself, why are you doing that advertising yeah. with, with something like zoom, you can really narrow down how long, how many hours you're spending looking at properties for any individual person, because you can count how many zoom, zoom conversations you have with that person. Yeah. Um, so really, it, it, it's really exciting to see us be able to, you know, change our mindset from again, just entering houses to actually being business entrepreneurs. That's amazing. Very cool. Cool. Well, thank you. Thank you for sharing all of that. I think it will be super valuable for people to hear. Uh, well, I appreciate it. I have to mention too, I mean, one of my best assets is you mode. Um, you and your company are fantastic. Um, I really, really appreciate everything you guys do. You make my job really easy from the marketing standpoint. I'm a proponent of hiring great help to do the things that I'm not good at. So I know how to sell houses. I don't know how to do the marketing. I'm not, I'm not a good, I can't create graphic designs. I can't create websites. I don't do phot photography and I certainly don't fly a drone. Um, although I think it would be fun to, I just don't. Um, <laughs> but I really appreciate companies um, that, that really can provide service and yours does a fantastic job for me. It's so easy. Um, when I call you guys and I ask you guys to do anything, you guys are super responsive. And with, the, with your less than 24 hours, most of the time response or return, from photo shoot to, to photography, um, it's, it's fantastic. I can have the, the photos done today and I can have the listing up tomorrow, which is unbelievably fast. So I really appreciate companies like you that are really taking the time to, to look at and explore the needs of, of our industry and are specifically designed for our industry because it's, it's not a, it's not a, um, a well-serviced in industry. So I really appreciate that about you guys. Awesome. Thank you so much. That's a, <laughs> that's a good, good surprise, but thank you. Thanks for You're saying welcome. that. <laughs> that's cool. Very good. Wow. I, I don't know what to say. Yeah, you're speechless and I appreciate like, it. <laughs> what do I do? <laughs> you, know, you, you know, you guys provide so many great services. You know, you do the 360 degree Matterport, you provide professional photography. I mean, you guys edit all the photography. I mean, I'm sure that I'm on, honestly, Without knowing this stat, I'm, I'm sure you look at pretty much every single one of the listings that uh, your, your, your photographers do. Yeah, um, more and more now too. Website design, the, you know, any of your marketing for flyers and feature sheets to, to business cards to, you know, you need swag for, for giveaways, anything like that. I mean, it's, it makes my job from the marketing side. Mm -hmm. It means that I don't have to do it anymore, right? And that's so remarkable because 
you have to hire good people to do good jobs. And if you're going to be, if you're a professional real estate agent and you're asking for, for a large sum of money from a sale, you know, part of, part of justifying that is, is providing great quality marketing, you know, and that, that comes from great quality companies. Yeah. So without being speechless, that's, you know, and, and, a un, you know, what was it, a plug that you weren't expecting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it does make my job so much better. And my clients, oh my goodness, the amount of people that, that give me the holy cow or holy crap, this Matterport thing is so cool. Or wow, those pictures don't make me, those pictures make me not want to move. Or, you know, oh, that, that drone shot makes my yard look so much bigger or whatever it is. I, the comments that I get from the quality, it, it's, it just, it doesn't stop, you know? And, and that is one of the reasons why people keep coming back to me as a, as their realtor is because the companies I hire are so high quality that they feel like they're getting great service and they're, they're getting what they're paying for. And that's a fantastic thing to be able to offer. Wow. Thank you so much. I'm so glad to hear. <laughs> that's awesome. Cool. Well, thank you. Where do we find you? Where's your contact information? Well, you always find me at Chase Realty. I know Chase Realty is a fantastic place to work. So if you are thinking about making a switch or stepping out, I know that, that Bruce would be happy to talk to you about, you know, your future in real estate and maybe provide you with some incentive as to, to why your business can actually thrive differently um, in a, under a different structure. Um, and then, yeah, you can call me uh, at my phone number, 905-541-196. You're welcome to call me anytime. Cool. Or at gmail.com. Awesome. Thank you. I'll put all that in the, in the notes too, but yeah, cool. very cool. Thank you. Thanks for sharing. And definitely you sold right away. Yeah. Nice. I'll do that. So, thanks mode. I really appreciate doing this. This is fun. Thank you. Yeah, that was fun. Thank you. That's awesome. <laughs>